uh, concerning this book, um, just tell people, who'd you write this for? What, why did you write this, and who yeah. did you write it for? First, I want to, before I dive into that, I just really want to honor Faith Glock, too. She really yeah. was instrumental in helping yeah. put this book together, and just the details and the like publishing and yeah. all of that like she I just want to honor her and uh, it was really important that somebody did that who knew me who knew the story and she's just a dear sister so I just really want to honor yes, her thank you Cliff. Um, but yeah when I wrote this book it was really the Lord spoke to me really clearly um, and I saw a vision of okay well, first I'll just say um, there was a lot of fear writing this book. Um, the deep-rooted fear was that I would write this book yeah. and it would be, Ruby would be a target for the enemy. Wow. It was like this deep-rooted fear. I'd write this book. And something worse would happen. And something worse would happen. Yeah. And I really just heard the Lord one wow. time in my quiet time and he said, like, I, this is not about you. Jeez. I did a miracle in this child and yeah. this story needs to go forth. Come on. And really, you know, testimony, the the um, the root means do it again. Yeah. And so the Lord is like, I want to do this again, like share with my testimony of what I did in Ruby's. The Lord wants to do this again. Yeah. Come on. And so then that really gave me permission. And then I saw a picture of a woman putting it, sliding this thin little book into her purse. Wow. And I was like, what is that, Lord? And he said, I want the reader to be able to sit down and read it in less than an hour. Wow. So he he gave you the strategy yeah. for like how this book would mm -hmm. look, all that. Yeah, wow. and I was like, it's like one of those moments, you know, like when Jesus talks about when it talks about in scripture how like if you, there's not enough pages in the world to talk about all that he did, all that he did. Wow. So for me to like condense it to a 45 right. hour minute read book, I was like, that's gonna be hard. Yeah. So <laughs> then I, you know, the Lord really walked me through this process because there are things that had. The, these were yes. the two things I was balancing. One was I really wanted to honor Ruby. Yeah. Um, and the second thing was what was a kiss yeah. and what was to share. Yeah. And so it was a lot of like, is this a kiss from you, Lord, to just keep like keep Mary in. treasure in my heart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is this to share with others? Amen. And so he really just started to show me these things. And so that's kind of how the book happened. And I really wow. felt led to write it he told me to write it during nursing hours. And that was really because mm. a couple things. I feel like the night watch is so holy. Yes. Um, the nighttime hours are so holy as intercessors, as, as praying. Amen. And then the second thing was, you know, my postpartum with Rosie was really taken from me yeah. um, by the enemy because right when Rosie was born was when Ruby's cancer came back. Came back right. So I, that first uh, three months, I, I didn't have that with Rosie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those were kind of the two reasons why I feel like the Lord told me to write it during the night. And um, it was just really cool how he honored that process. That's good because you can you tell that in the book, the intentionality. I think you protected Ruby yeah. really well, Yeah, you know, and also the sh you listened to the Lord. Yeah. And I think that's a really good nugget for people that are doing creative things, you yeah. know. Um, like for me, if I was to write this book, I probably like in my mind, like I want it, I, I got to capture the whole thing. Yeah. Right. And I think sometimes where I miss it when God's asking me to step out in some kind of creative stream yeah. or like testimony yeah, or, yeah. or doing something like this, uh, my flesh grabs a hold of it. Yeah. You know, in some way. The, the 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 original idea might be from the Lord, but yeah. then I, I take on too much. I, too, I yeah. start working in the flesh. And so I just think you walked really closely with the Lord. You're yeah. not trying to get attention from this. This is probably yeah. why it's getting a lot of attention yeah. and why it is anointed. You All you simply did was what God asked you yeah. to do. And I think that's a real good nugget. Um, and so one more time, just... Who did you write this for? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> I didn't answer the question. No, you answered one. I asked two. You answered one. So um, I wrote this book for, I think, initially I wrote this book for a mother or father walking through yeah. a very thick season with a sick child. But then as I was writing it, I realized I was really writing it for parents. Come on. Um, and 
just parents who really struggle with fear, mm. fear of death in their kids, yeah, fear on. of letting go, fear of giving their children back to the Lord. Mm. Um, and then it kind of evolved to just people who are, you know, asking for the gift of faith, yeah, wanting faith, and just um, desiring more of that in their life. So it's kind of like, it's kind of evolved into that. Yeah. Um, wow. But attention, like when I first wrote it, I really saw a mama mm. in the thick of it wow. reading it. Wow. A dad yeah. in the thick of it reading it. And you told me that you were, we really like to see some of these books at Riley Hospital, which is yeah. where Ruby got treatment, um, you know, and, you know, available yeah. for mothers. We just heard our friend Mitch has a, uh, a friend who's walking through cancer yeah. and treatment. And we know a few people that yeah, have read it. That's through been treatment. really a gift. I, I've had a few women reach out to me, and they, two specifically, that said, "I just want you to know, I'm on my first round of chemo. I'm going to my first round of chemo, yeah. and someone gave me your book Come to on. read." So that was just really encouraging. You know, I, I had a vision too, and a, and I won't share the whole the whole prophetic word I got from the Lord, but I had a vision, and I saw, you know, when you get like a hospital welcome back. I remember getting it with Ruby, and mm. I had like a toothbrush, right, a map Come of on. the Riley, and vouchers for food i saw like a book in that Come plastic welcome bag right um <clears throat> so yeah that's kind of just yeah. what i who i wrote it for and right. you know really just the main reason is <laughs> in obedience right, right, to right, the right. father and i'm thinking about like you know we had to walk through like tall pine which is in warsaw is the one that you yeah. know made the book and helped us with some of that process and we're thinking like how much do you sell the book for and I just honor you again. I mean, nine ninety nine. You know, yeah. uh, uh, I gave it for free. If it, I yeah, I mean, it's just could. it's so available. Yeah, and I think that's why the Lord is really yeah. using it and going to use it. Um, you mentioned something about fear. You're right. I think this book releases faith. Yeah, and that's why it's palatable uh, to those who need faith. We all need faith. Yeah. What do I mean by faith? Really, trust, trusting yeah. God through hard situations. Yeah. Right. You talked about in this book, you, you said something, um, maybe I'll just find it and read it, um, but you talked about how our choice, we, t we had a choice to make, is what you said, and we chose to worship. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. I mean, when your daughter is diagnosed with a rare cancer, you kind of have ch two choices. You can choose to find joy in the suffering or you can choose to um, go down this rabbit hole of fear yeah. and anxiety and allow that to dictate your Come on. your day to day and mm. um, <clears throat> so I just remember like a pivotal moment really stewarded by you saw all this of just like we're going to choose to walk in the goodness and the faithfulness Come of on. our God and no matter what no matter what happens, praise God. Um, we're going to choose to declare His goodness, yeah. His faithfulness, and it was easy to say it, but to really believe it in your heart yeah. was another thing. Yeah. And that took a process for me, yeah. and a process I really talk about in the Lord of, of you know, I had this I call it my Abraham Isaac moment where Saul mm -hmm. and I really laid Ruby on the altar and really said to like the Lord, she is yours, whether she's alive whether she's dead, like she really is yours. So, um, you know, I just, I, it, it was interesting. That's the picture right there that you're talking about, that yeah. altar moment. Yeah. And it's a picture of Callie and I on the ground during Ruby's 20 hour surgery. And, uh, that was a moment where, you know, I would say we had to say, uh, no matter what Lord, you know? And, um, uh, Man, jeez. There's a verse I'm trying to find here, but, um... but you said here we made a decision. Our family was going to walk this out with joy, peace, and victory. And as you talked to just now, you were talking about we had faith, but we had to apply our faith to the situation. Yeah, and worship was the way that God helped us apply our belief to what seemed like an impossible situation. Uh, and the fruit of that was joy, yeah. <laughs> peace, 
and victory. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, it's not like we weren't sad. I mean, no. man, when we came back the second time, really, we went to Sunrise. Mitch was leading worship for Kingdom Collective, yeah, and man. Sunrise worship team happened to be there. Which I would say, every time we've hit a situation where we were concerned about Ruby, people have been like in our path to pray almost right away. And that was a night we came back from Indy, and I remember just crying, man, in that. You remember that, Mitch? Yeah. And um, so I was sad. I was broken, man. Yeah. You know, uh, times of sadness, times of fear, you know, but um, the uh, application of our faith yeah. through having what is worship, looking at Jesus, yeah, we received joy, peace, and yeah. victory. Come on. Even when we felt like it was a defeat. Yeah, that just reminds me of a verse in James. It's James uh, 1 Man. 2. Count it all joy, yes. my brothers, when you meet trials yes, of various God. kinds, for you know that yes. the testing of your faith. Yes produces steadfastness. Yes. And you can translate that word. I just heard this on Star 88.3. Pray, bless Star 88.3. Yeah. Come on. He said, he said, you can replace that word faith with trust. trust like it, it can be translated yeah. to wow. trust as well, right? Yeah. So add trust to that. Real, real quick, what does it say at the end of that verse? It says, for you know that the testing of your faith produce, oh, sorry, the testing yeah, of, of your, your trust. trust produces steadfastness. Yes. And let the step badness have its full effect that yeah. you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. nothing. Wow. Praise God, man. Yeah. So I just remember like always praying, Lord, let me find joy in the suffering. Yeah. Um, because I want to I want to produce steadfastness. Um, so yeah, I just mm. felt like every time we had a really um just a very like pivotal moment in her uh like when she was diagnosed with cancer, we came back from the hospital and yeah. our basement was full. We worshiped, we prayed. When we found out her cancer came back, we right. went to the crossing yeah. and we worshiped and we prayed. Yeah. And um, I just remember like in sunrise, like just pivotal things. Yes. That were we'd always respond with right. worship. Right. Because what it helped us do is get our minds off of ourselves. Right. And get our mind on Christ. On Christ. Which in the means led to the end there too, because in the end it was like, no matter what, Lord, yes. even if Ruby died, yeah. she's alive in Christ. Yes. And I think that was the root the root of a lot of yeah. our fears is is the fear of death. Yeah. Uh, especially our kids. Yes. Right? Are the innocent. Yes. God showed himself faithful yeah. to to us and spared Ruby. Thank you, Lord. You yeah. know, and, and a lot of people don't see that breakthrough. Um but we have this hope. Amen? Amen. I mean, we have this hope that when we say yes to Jesus, we come alive forever, come eternally. On. Yeah. We have this hope, friend. Yeah. Even if you've lost a loved one, lost a child, mm -hmm. we have this hope. Yeah. Even if we lose Ruby, cancer comes back. Yeah. We believe by faith it's not. Yeah. But even if that happens, we have this hope. Yeah. We're not going to be intimidated by, by by fear, yeah, you know, and like there is this fear. It's like, well, what if it comes back? You yeah. Know? Well, what if it doesn't? Yeah. You know, and um, but anyways, we have this hope, mm -hmm. right? That we are alive forever. Okay, you say this, and I really want. I think this is important for this day and age. You know, we talk about medicine. We we walk this out. We say Ruby's testimony is a miracle. Some people may perceive that as God. God was the surgeon. We believe God is the, the great physician. But we also believe that, that God uses doctors to bring, you know, bring about healing. Uh, you're a nurse practitioner. I really feel like I remember a time we prayed specifically and I saw, I think, oil on your hands or I saw your hands being used. Yeah. And ever since I pray, you go to work every morning um, and when you round that your hands would bring healing. Yeah. They have healing hands. Come you know, on. I, I believe God placed you in that place. Yeah. To bring be, a, be yeah. bring healing, so God uses doctors, physicians. You mm -hmm. say, I like to think, or this is Doctor Grayson. She said, uh, this is the doctor that did Ruby's uh, port. So they place a port. If you're not familiar with cancer, they place a port there where a needle can go in, and they can, uh, you know, administer ke uh, chemotherapy medicine. Yeah. Right. So it was right here on her chest. The port, and they have to, she has to go under for all that. And our doctor was Dr. Grayson, and she says, uh, she said to you after this, I like to think that I'm in great collaboration with the Lord as a doctor. So as a, as a nurse practitioner, 
our doctor said that we ended up taking communion with her. That was a beautiful moment. That's a precious story. That's page 24 on the book. Will you talk a little bit about medicine and God? How, how, did, we, how did we trust God, but also use medicine? We prayed over the medicine, right? But she did chemo. She did 10 rounds of chemo, yeah. right? She had a 20-hour surgery, removed a five and a half centimeter tumor out yeah. in New York. So how do, how do we balance that? How do we walk in faith and how do we walk in practical, yeah. health, you know, allowing medicine to be an avenue of healing? Yeah. I mean, like for just for Ruby, you know, I just remember like um, there were things I just, I could feel it in my spirit yeah. when there were things that were said and I was like, no, that's, that's not right. That's not right. And then there were things that were said. I was like, "That's right." Yeah, you, it's like that discernment. It's, it's in your belly, yep. and it's moment by moment. Yep. Um, with the chemotherapy, we would pray, lay hands on the back, say, "Lord, we just pray that this this chemo would take yep. out every cancerous cell and it would preserve every healthy cell." Amen. It would I, do exactly what it's supposed to do, yes. and not do anything and else. No side damaging. effects. And I'll just say, she never had vomiting. She never had a port infection. She never had to go into Glory the hospital God. for infection. Glory to God. She never had low platelets, low Glory hemoglobin, low she, nothing. And anything that did happen that was, you know, a little complicated, but it was resolved quickly. Yeah. Um, Glory and to then Jesus. I just remember. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just remember, like, I can remember something specific. Uh, so when Ruby was first diagnosed, she had this rare autoimmune disease that kind of got triggered by the cancer yeah. and she was in horrific pain Yeah, and, um, she was on like morphine, Percocet and all this stuff yeah. and we could not get her calmed down for weeks. And I remember, um, the doctor had recommended Seroquel, which is like an antipsychotic medication. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, it's got really good effects and everything. And I just remember being like a check on my spirit. I was like, no. Yeah. No, right, and I don't. I don't need to justify it. I, like it right. just it came up in my spirit. Yeah, no. yeah. And so I think you just have to ask the Holy Spirit, like what to do, what not to do. Right. He'll show you. But I just think there can be this beautiful blend of you know, like that doctor has said, a collaboration with doctors and yeah. and um, you know, God in His so I I I still can't believe this that yeah. like God chose to use us. Yes, Amen. Yes. Like Thank he you, set Jesus. it up where he has to use us. That's and so man. like, mm. why wouldn't stuff. he use a doctor? Yeah. Why wouldn't he use, you Come know, on, and um, so, you know, and even the surgeon, I mean, he gets his York. hands blessed. Out in New York. yeah. Out in New York City, the Dr. surgeon Gerstle. blessed by, um, and La Quaglia, they get blessed, their hands get blessed by the Catholic priest every morning. Yeah. So it's like, um. Yeah, I just think we can really over spiritualize it and make it weird, and it doesn't have to be. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I it think, just doesn't have well, to be. It's we're, we're called to walk by faith. Yeah, not by sight. Just a quick testimony. You know, my family grew up in a movement. Yeah. That, uh, um, and it was actually Northern Indiana movement. Um, maybe some people watching would be familiar with this movement, but they essentially said doctors are wrong. Yeah. And they stopped going to the doctor. Many, many kids died. Many people died. Yeah. Um, you know, and that, that ended up being extremely painful and yeah. really, really, uh, you know, just wrong. Yeah. And it was being promoted and preached to not go to doctors. Baby, uh, babies were bo being born in the home not surviving of simple complications that could have been solved yeah. by being in the hospital. And so, um, yeah, I just think there's a, there balance is the wrong word, but it, we're called to walk by faith yeah. and we need to hear from the great physician. And then we also need to, you know, you know, be smart, be wise, yeah. you know what I mean? Get a second yeah. opinion. One testimony about Kali is so Ruby, when she was diagnosed, had 10 rounds of chemo. Her port came out seven to eight months after we found out she had cancer. Came out, we're thinking the cancer is gone. About six, seven months later, the tumor grows. It comes Unex back. It, like, comes, it comes back, back right? Back. And, you know, and at that time we just had Rosie. It was her year scan that we found this out. Okay, so her year scan from the port being displaced. And, uh, 
you know, we're like, what in the world, you know? And my wife, you know, at this time, we're getting, obviously, there's a lot of people following Ruby's story, reaching out to us, people saying things like, this is what you should do, which is kind of annoying, you know? And we really, and you being a nurse practitioner, babe, you just walked in humility. You didn't, you didn't act like you knew it all. And I really appreciated that about you, even though I know you knew a lot of what was going on and how even to treat it at times. Yeah. Um, but this, the second time she was diagnosed, we're driving, I just remember this video, we're driving home and we get a, you get an Instagram message from a young mother who just lost her daughter to neuroblastoma up in the Fort Wayne area. I think Ruby's one of four diagnosed and she's the only one that's still alive. And this mother reaches out and says, hey, and, and something hits in you about getting a second opinion mm -hmm. because Riley at that time was talking about going through 18 months of stem of cell, stem cell yeah. which is really hard on a, a, on a person. Yeah. Like we've been on the fifth floor at Riley, bro. Like yeah. it's, it's not easy to be up there. Yeah. Right? I mean, you see children suffering, dying. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and the, a lot of the treatment does that, right? Because yeah. it's so just you're trying to get the cancer yeah. out. But babe, you, you, this one message, you felt a nudge to look into. And yeah. it ended up being, you know, the connection to Dr. Gerstel out in New York. Yeah. It, they, she had her number in there. And in that humility, bro, you were like, we need to look into this. Mm -hmm. And you called the doctor, and that testimony is wild, right? Like yeah. five days later, he calls us back. Like yeah. no doctor calls back. I called the front desk, and I was like, hi. They're like, um, who's the patient? Right. And I was, was like, like oh, I'm just calling. I was on a like, whim. well, actually, my right. daughter's not a patient there. And she's like, yet, right? do you have a referral? I was like, no. No. And you kind of tell them the story. Yeah. Riley gets their stuff to New York and all that. No, they don't get them to New York. Remember, oh. Mitch was in the car with us in Bailey, and the Dr. Modak called me. It was like, oh, wow. yeah, double dub. Yeah, double dub. Double dub. He, oh, go, wow. he called and was like, hey, Jeez. they told me about your daughter. And then he's calling Riley, begging for records. Can't get them. Like It was like this whole thing. Dang. It was like, yeah, it was so I saw, the favor but, of God. But I saw that, man. Like I saw in humility, yeah. it wasn't, you, you uh, sought wise counsel. Yes. And you received... This, you know, mother who lost her child, yeah. you know, that was like the one person we actually listened I to. I just felt the wind. I read it and I wow. felt, usually when I would read it, I would just like delete it or I'd be like, you know. Right. Because people would do that because they cared. It yeah. wasn't like oh, yeah, they were trying to sure. tell me what to for do. Sure. 100%. They just, they didn't um, know how they to. They cared so much and, you know, people would tell me and I'd say, you know, thank you. And it just would, but this woman said it and I felt the wind of God. And I was like, I need to call this woman today. Wow. I've never had that out of all this stuff. I mean, wow. I mean, for a year and a half, wow. the amount of messages I would get was. Yeah, we, a year later, we saw her at the Y. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Gosh, that was so emotional. Um, yeah. Um, praise God. You said you felt the wind. Like, all right, as we talk about medicine and faith, mm -hmm. okay. Following the wind is super spiritual. Like, yeah. how, how do we, <laughs> how could we encourage uh, someone to follow the wind? It's a good question. Because um, through this process, yeah. I learned as a mother what discernment versus fear is. Mm. So, what I learned wow. was discernment and fear can feel very similar. Discernment, though, the fruit is always peace. The Lord will tell you something and you just feel peace versus fear is you f hear something and your heart starts to race, you get nervous, you start to, your mind starts to do this thing where you go, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. But when it's discernment, it could be a scary thing. Like I remember um, with Ruby, mm. discernment was we would not do stem cell so that at that point would meant like we would start hospice. When I had made that decision, when we had made that decision that we weren't going to, we do were stem not going to do stem cell for when it came back. Even it was scary. I had peace. You'd rather live out her life yes. healthy for a few years, yes, than her suffer through eighteen yes. months of. 
Wow. Or it would be like Jeez, um, what in the world? something like there would be, uh, I remember <sighs> she would get these new Lasta shots and they would cause like this bone pain. Right. And instead of, I remember discernment was, uh, discernment was, we're going to stop the new Lasta. And from that. The shot that helps bone Yeah. Pain. From that. I, there was just complete peace. Peace. Now, if it was fear driven, it'd be like, okay, well, I'm what, gonna what stop about, this, and then her, her white pain? blood cell counts would drop. And she doesn't get an infection. Right. It's like this hamster, hamster wheel right, that right, happens. Right. Wow. So I really learned through this process what discernment is and what fear is. Yeah. And man, I just, Jeez. I'm so passionate about this because I see so many parents struggle with fear. Right. And. Fear of sickness, fear right. of cancer, right. fear of death, right. all of that, man. It's so real. And um, I'm just really grateful to the Lord because it's almost like I had to look fear in the death yeah. to like <laughs> be healed from yeah, it, yeah, set yeah. free from it. Yeah. And I remember when I was walking through it, Eric Gilmore one time, he, I was listening to a sermon and he mm. said this and it it really changed my life. He said... The fear of death is the seed of atheism. Mm. And I was like, dang. And so then I began to realize like my fear was coming from a place of doubt mm. and doubt mm. that Jesus is who he says he is and mm. the doubt of eternal life, all this stuff. And I, it just became, I had to deal yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. And, in, and God's grace, man, he walked me through it. And, um, it, but it, it was like, it had to, I like had to look death straight in the right. face. Yeah, yeah. And I had to deal with right. it. So we're going somewhere here. I feel really sense the spirit of the Lord yeah. on this. So the opposite of of fear is it isn't faith. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Yeah. I think it's actually no. love. Yeah. According to first John four. Yeah. Perfect love. Yeah. Cast out fear. Yes. Faith is a byproduct of perfect love. Yes. Okay? Belief, trust. Yes. The byproduct yeah. of, of love. Okay. Where does love come from? Well, according to First John, love comes from God. Love is God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we love because he loved us first. Yeah. So you see the genesis of faith is not from us. Yeah. Even for our kids, for other. It's from God. Mm-hmm. So it must be received first, then given. And so that, that, that was where God was taking us. Yeah. Death isn't as intimidating as you think it is. No. Fear is not as powerful, as strong as my love. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And, and I just think that's so, and this is what we talk about, like, this is why we have to have eyes. This is why worship is so important. Yeah. Is so that we can, in our the eyes of our heart, yeah, see God where He is on His throne. Come on, receive His love. Yeah, Amen. And then not be afraid. Yeah, right. Come on. Now in this world we'll have tribulations. Yeah, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Yeah. That's including death. Yeah. Jesus destroyed the powers of hell. Yeah. Destroyed death. Jesus, did you know that when Jesus died, <laughs> he descended into the depths, took the keys, amen, <laughs> and then rose from the grave, amen. walked the earth for 40 days, and then ascended on high. God yeah. the Father placed Jesus at yeah. the highest place over all authority, yep. and now Christ prays for all, all of us to have walk in this same love, the same power, Come on. overcoming these same fears. Praise God that we have a king born of flesh, that experienced what we've experienced. Yeah. He he felt what we felt when we walked through with Ruby. Yeah. Man, yeah. yet he overcame. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I just remember one time I had this like moment and um I Ruby was, you know, I, I use the word suffering very um yeah. there are people that really suffer, you know. Um, but there was a moment that I felt like Ruby was like, she just had all this pain. We were like holding her down to do stuff. And I just yeah. remember like, like I just, I, I remember just crying out to the Lord, like, Lord, let it be me. Like, yeah. I, like, 
I will do all of this. Just It was like seeing your child that you're supposed to protect and love. It was really, that was really hard. But um, I remember the Lord just spoke. So the father, I remember, th- I remember this revelation, like the father yeah. watched his yeah. son yeah, suffer. Jeez, so dude. I could go to him with my pain because oh, he understood it to a magnitude that I have Lord. no record. I, I can't even comprehend to watch. I would think like, what would it be like to watch Ruby take all the Jesus, sins man. of the world and be tortured? Like I could go to the father with my pain because he understood it. And um, I don't know, it just felt like I wasn't alone. I felt like I, I really felt like, yeah, just that I could really be comforted in that. Yeah. I think this is why Jesus is using Ruby's testimony. Yeah. As much as she is now. You know, I mean, like, look, look at her face. <laughs> She's so cute. Like, there's something, I've had people, I've had three or four people tell me, when I see Ruby's face, yeah. I see Jesus. Come on. Yeah. And it's, I think it's to the point you just said, like, Jesus died innocently. Yeah. You know? Like, he healed, he healed the sick, man. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the and innocence those, was what was hard. I mean, he, he She's wasn't like, coming, yeah. he wasn't killing people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he wasn't. I mean, he was completely innocent. Yeah. And Ru- Ruby, I think, captures a little of Christ's innocence. Yeah. A child being sick. Yeah. Like, what the heck, man? That's not from God. Yeah. And to see God use her story and overcome, it's, it's the story of yeah. Christ. Come on. It's the message of Jesus. Yeah. I, you know, when you said that, it kind of brought up another thing that I really struggled with. Um, <clears throat> was uh, it was God's will for Ruby to be sick. Dang, oh, we're about to talk about it. Oh, we're about um, to talk about it. And so I, I, have a, I have a lot to say about this. I would say my, what I would respond with is a lot different than what I said in the beginning versus what I said now. I see now why the Lord allowed Ruby to go through this. Mm. I see why this, the healing didn't come Straight from the jump. Wow. You know, Romans 8, 18, for the suffering now will not compare to the glory that he will reveal. Christ was revealed through her suffering. Jesus. And so, yeah. you know, it, you know what man, like what wow. was for evil, God made for good. So like all of that is true. And um, I remember, oh gosh, this, this moment where, and I write about it in the book. And, you know, Jesus, he didn't bring the healing yeah. All at, like right, yeah. well, we prayed for healing. We believed in it. Yeah. I remember like praying that they would go in for the biopsy and the cancer would be gone, and like having faith that yeah, it could yeah. happen. Yeah. And it didn't. And um, I remember the Lord gave me this beautiful revelation of when uh, Jesus comes to raise Lazarus, and you know when when Mary and Martha go to him, he said, "My my brother's dead." Yeah. And in that moment, he could have raised him. Right. Right in that moment. Right. And he didn't. No. And then when he gets there, he weeps. Yeah. And I just mm. remember like the Lord showing me like, first of all, Jesus has wept through this. Mm. He wept. He wept through this with us the whole way. Wow. And there was a reason why he didn't bring the healing in a moment. Yeah. Do I think God put cancer in Ruby? No, I do not. Mm. And how I know that is because um, even when I found out, I asked the head neuroblastoma doctor in the world, I said, when did this cancer start? He said, at the moment of conception. Dang, bro. A neuroblastoma cell is the first cell to form. So the moment of conception, wow. the, the con- conception, the enemy was trying to eliminate my child. Jeez, bro. Um, but I really realized, looking back at the story now, writing this story, why God did not bring the healing in a moment mm. and the lives that were touched, mm-hmm. the nurses that were ministered yeah, to, the gospel went forth through the suffering. 
And so I just want to like encourage yeah, people, on. like one of my main prayers yes, in this Lord. book is that you would make a, your valley a well. Oh, amen, come on. So whatever valley you're walking through, you would make it a well oh, to Jesus. bring people to Christ. Amen, because there is something about when you walk through the suffering that people watch. Jeez, dude. They do. And I don't know, they just, you grab their attention and it's an opportune time to preach the gospel. Jeez, bro. And so just like my heart cry is that you would make your valley a well and it's hard. Mm. And the other thing I would say too is when you're walking through a valley, especially when it's sickness, pray for people who are sick. Because there was something so sweet about Solomon and I when we were walking through this and we would meet someone that was had cancer or was sick. It's like the Lord gives you this sensitivity to what they're walking through and your prayers are like so appointed. Right, 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 right. Um, and so, yeah, those are my two encouragements. Uh, I just, I don't even know what the question was, but um, I just know that it was not, oh, it was not God's will that Ruby had cancer. Right. I just don't believe that. Right. Um, it's not the will of God for us to be in sickness, you know, and even like, it's not, yeah, it's, so all that to say, my, my, uh, now looking back through the journey, I thank God that we walked through it. And that seems weird to say. I feel honored that he used my daughter to perform a miracle and it, took time to get there right that doesn't just like happen like yes my you know like we're walking through this and this is awesome like um it was really hard but it refined me it sanctified me it stripped me back it you know it really put in me that we are not if if i could just summarize what it taught me like the overarching theme is that I begin to live for things of eternity and begin to focus on eternity mm-hmm. and how important that is. And everything, it comes from a place of living for eternity. Jeez. What's after this? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just my answer that it's not God's will <laughs> that Ruby had cancer. James 5, 14 and 15. Gosh, I is just it, love James. Is anyone among He's you sick? One of my faves. Let them call the elders of the church to Come pray on. over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. Come on. Um, you bring up a really interesting question. Is it the will of the Lord? Is healing God's will, right? Mm-hmm. And we're not going to cover that on this episode. <laughs> you should cover that. I was literally going to say, you should talk about, is it God's will to heal? Go go there, dude. Go there, bro, because faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And people haven't heard that. People yeah. need to hear that. Yeah. And you believe it. Come on. You believe it. Well, I got to be honest. I got to be honest right now. I believe it. I believe it. I believe we serve a, a good God. Yeah. I believe I also am embracing mystery. Yeah. And the mystery of God, you know? Yeah. And the sovereignty of God. Yeah. You know? And and I, I think I'm I'm just I'm getting in tune with people that have lost people. Mm-hmm. I don't want to create theology around experience. Yeah. It's got to be based on the scripture. Yeah, yeah. Come on. It's got to be. Yeah. Amen. And God and we and we got to tap into God's nature written in the scripture. Yeah. His name is Jehovah Rapha. Yes. Healing is not what he does, friends. No. Yeah. It's who he is. Come on. Yes. It's who he is. Yeah. He also didn't come just to heal our bodies. No. Yeah. That's a byproduct of the healing of our hearts. Yeah. And our souls. Come on. The internal healing. Yes. 
And that's what I want to focus more on than the manifestation of healing yes. in the body. Mm-hmm. Now, I am one who prays for healing. I believe in it. Yeah. I believe in the laying on of hands. Yeah. I've also prayed for people. You know, I prayed for people. I've seen them get healed. Yeah. You know, praise God. I've also prayed for people in, in, who have died. Yeah. I prayed for one mom one time. I'll never forget this. 40 years old, stage four, four kids, cancer. And I remember going into that hospital room with such faith. Yeah. You know? That she was like, I had so much faith. Yeah. That she wasn't going to die. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, the testimony, and she died two weeks later. And the testimony. She gave her life to the Lord that day, you know. And it just, man, you know. um, So I I don't want to like. This isn't this isn't a doctrinal like push, Mm -hmm. right? I want to. I just want to meet people where they're at. I believe Mm -hmm. the Lord does that. Yeah. Um, I've seen prayers of healing with I thought was faith, and it and it happened. Also, seen you know prayers where I thought was faith and it didn't happen. Yeah, that's why the emphasis for yeah. Ruby's story, yeah, is the no matter what. Yes, I think that's what God wants us to get to. Yeah, I think what's so cool too about you, Saul, and most of the people know this, but you know, I just remember like, so you're 12 years old, you lose your mom to breast cancer, yeah. your mom's 40 in her 40s, dies of breast cancer. It would be so easy for you to live with this chip on your shoulder of, I prayed for healing for my mom, believed, didn't come. Yeah. Then your daughter gets cancer. Yeah. And it would have been so easy for you to just have this chip, this, this anger towards God, this, like, I know you didn't do it now, you're not going to do it again, like all of that. And you just never had that. Mm-hmm. You had so much faith. We believed for healing. We prayed for healing. And so I just want to honor that in you because I have, you know, I've seen that a lot where, um, yeah, we just, we allow like our human experiences to define God's nature. Yeah. That's just not scriptural. (laughs) Um, And so I just want to honor that in you and just like, Hmm. you could have so easily just given up Hmm. and just been mad. And, and you weren't hmm. ever. I gotta be honest, you know. You know, I really, I love ministering to people. I love, you know, evangelism. You know, I love street type of ministry. Like, you know, yeah. I love it's a, it's a love hate relationship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Same. And healing is something like we'll go to the store, right? And we'll just see tons of cast, <laughs> like tons yeah. of people that. And I'll just be honest. Sometimes I have great faith. You know, and sometimes I don't. Yeah. Sometimes I don't. Yeah. Well, it's, and that's why it's the gift of faith. Yeah. You know, I, it was one time I was talking to a dear friend, Nav, and she, I said, there was one time we were praying for this woman uh, not to lose her baby. She was going to, she was having like a miscarriage and we just, I mean, we went. Sure. We have faith, man. Right, just but. like. Trust. Praying, fasting. Like, tr- like just. What he can do. I might even know this woman. Right. And she lost the baby. And I remember like being so upset. And Nav reached out to one of her mentors, Lou Engel, and he said, um, she said, How do you do this? Like, you know, like it's so yeah. hard. And he said, Every single time mm. you get this much closer. Come on, dude. Every single wow. time you get this much closer. Wow. Every time your faith Come just on. begins to grow stronger. It's good, man. We got stronger. Come on. And Keep stronger. Going. You got to keep going, man. And if God just, I could go on and on about this. I'm not going to get into that. But I just encourage you, like, man, don't just don't keep pushing. Don't stop. Come on. Keep asking for yes. more. Come, yes. Keep asking for Come the on. gift of faith. Yes. Stepping out and faith. Like, it just. Yes. I, don't I think, know. I think what I hear us saying is faith starts and ends with God. Yes. Trust. Yes. And I think our testimony, we say, you can trust God. Yeah. You can trust God. Yeah. God is good. 
Yeah. He is faithful. He he's the one yeah. that's faithful in this relationship. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. It, it it starts with God, it ends with God. Yeah. And I think sometimes we think it starts and ends with us. Yeah. Like we gotta muster up this belief. Yeah. And I'm I'm here to say faith, trust start starts with God. He's the faithful one. Yeah. And when we get around him, when we read his word, come on. When we receive the Holy Spirit, yes. amen, the same spirit that was in Christ is in us, we can walk in faith. We can walk in trust. We can look at impossible situations and say, God wants to get in there. Look at the scriptures, man. God loved the impossible. <laughs> it's like every, he tried to make it more impossible for Israel yes. to conquer nations, yeah. right? Lessening numbers. Why? So that the glory of God, the power of God, the faithfulness of God could be revealed. Amen. And so we pray that, that through Ruby's story, yeah. that you'd be encouraged yeah. in the, and, and you would let discouragement, that you feel like you have little faith. God can do a lot with a mustard seed of faith. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's not intimidated by your unbelief. He isn't. He's not intimidated by your doubt. I think, I, I think we think God pushes us away. No. God's not intimidated by mm-hmm. doubt. Man. That's my favorite thing is, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Come on, help my unbelief, the centurion. He said that. Yes. Great faith I haven't seen like this on all of Israel. Come on. What? Yes. And so I think think our faithfulness to God, okay, we're talking about healing, we're talking about testimony, Ruby, our faithfulness to God is just coming to Him. Yeah. It's, 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 It's this resilience that to go back. Yeah. To turn to. Mm-hmm. Repent. It, yes. it's, it's, I think that's our faithfulness to God. Yeah. Amen. Now, Ruby's testimony, we, we really felt the gift of faith come upon our life. I, friends, I ask for faith times. God, help me have faith. Help me yeah. to trust you. And I think that's a good practical, like mm-hmm. that's a great prayer. If you feel like faith is low, yeah. ask God for faith. Ask yes. God to, to, for, for help, to trust him, yeah. to believe in him. And I would say in a second step is there were times when we didn't have faith and I was very aware of that. For sure. And that's why we had a body of intercessors. Dude, we had to have other people pray for us. I just said standing this in, in the gap, discipleship man, school. You have to have intercessors Bro. standing. Like there would be times where I'd be like, I have no faith right no now. No faith, man. I have no... I'm, no faith to fast. Nothing. Like we couldn't even practically... Pray. Pray. I couldn't. There were times I couldn't pray. No. And I would just, I would, that's when Mitch. the body, right. the body of Christ, like that right there was right, the bro. body. That's 100%. That in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Oh, I, I remember goodness. reaching out to, we went on a, a fast, 10 day, ten day or I ate a Snickers bar. He got really mad at me. <laughs> 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 he, really, he, he really did. I remember leaving the oh, golf course. Really, really. <laughs> you're going to let <laughs> this, <laughs> that's what he said. He's like, you're going to let a Snickers bar stand in between your and your daughter's healing. I'm like, bro, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> relax. I was laughing at the car. <laughs> Did you? Confession. Bro, I was. Confession yeah, right, time. Right? You just confessed to orange juice. Uh, I remember laughing at Mitch being like, bro, all right, but it was really good. Stingers bar. <laughs> uh, but I, dude, I agree with that 100%. The times I reached out to you, I reached out to Aaron. I couldn't finish it fast. I felt, and I, call, I called Aaron and asked him to finish it for me. And I think that's really important, you know. Yeah. Don't don't try to like that's mustering up. You can't muster it up, man. Um, and 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 I'll say this, and this will be the last thing, one of the last things, and we can pray. But uh, you know, there's a time at Riley, Cali, where I f- I felt privileged yeah. to walk through this mm. with you. I felt privileged uh, to receive this assignment from God. Yeah, wow. Mm. And, and I think that's how much faith God supplied us with yeah. during that journey mm-hmm. um, where I was like, man, Lord, thank you yeah. for allowing us to worship you through this, to experience your love and power mm. through this, and at this point, she this was her first, this wasn't the second time, this is the first round of chemo, right? And uh, and so, what God brings together, yeah. 
nothing no man can separate. Yeah. And uh, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for this book, uh, babe. And I would just, I want you to pray. Um, pro Moe. <laughs> I want you to pray no. for, uh, and just release faith. Release your faith. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that God would do it again. Uh, I just believe people that hear this prayer are, are going to be healed in their bodies. Mm-hmm. I believe people that are hearing this testimony are going to turn to Jesus yeah. and experience his, his love, his compassion, his mercy, which in the scripture when Jesus healed, he moved with compassion. Mm-hmm. And so we love you guys. Thank you for watching. And we just pray that God would continually reveal himself to you. Yes, yes Lord. <clears throat> When you were just talking, I felt like I saw um I was like I saw a picture of a a woman in like a, a what do they call it, a straight jacket yeah. and I just saw her um she was in a straight jacket, and I saw her talking to a trusted friend in the straight jacket falling off, and I felt like the Lord was saying there's someone listening right now and I think it's I think it's a woman and she is so bound by fear over her children and I feel like the Lord is saying you need to confess that to a trusted person and you need to shine light on it so whoever that is I just ask that you would um, just take this as a sign that you would be bold and you would call that trusted friend and you would just confess whatever is binding you down Fear of death, fear of sickness, fear of um, just whatever it is, Lord, that you would shine light on it by the confession of her of confession of mouth. Yes. And Lord, I just speak to every listener right now, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just encounter them in a sweet and fresh new way that they would be encouraged by this, that their faith would be built, built up in the most holy faith. Lord, I pray that we would grasp that we are living of things, not of this world, but of things of eternity. Help us to stay focused on things of eternity. Yes. To fix our minds on things above and not on things beneath. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you're continuing to do this in me every day. And Lord, we just, any mom or father who's listening to this who has lost a child, man, I pray that you would just speak to them in a new way to comfort them, Lord. You're the Prince of Peace. That maybe they're just... um, there's so much bitterness and, and just anger yeah. that only you can touch. Yeah. Only you can heal. Amen. Only you, Father. Only you. So, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for your precious son, Jesus, and what he died and what he purchased for us on the yes, cross. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, 
Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Thank you, Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Come on, just a few times. Here we go. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> it's like whiplash. Callie's new book, it's called Ruby, and it's the story of Ruby. Uh, you can get this on Amazon. But I really feel like this book breaks chains. Um, it brings God near, like it says, our journey of cancer when heaven touched earth. I think that was such a, a great uh, short description of what what this is. So I just encourage you, this, this will encourage you. Thanks, babe. I really love my wife, too. <laughs>